This is Dr. Patrick Price, and welcome to the Body Detective Show. Today, guys, I have a very special guest. Her name is Kathy O'Brien. In this show today, we're going to discuss mind control. Not just talk about it, but you're going to hear from someone who's been involved in that program, who was in the industry since a child taken into the MK Ultra program and actually escaped it as an adult. We're talking about MK Ultra Mind Control, the CIA operated type programs that's been around for a long time. And you're going to hear the explicit details of how this works today. Guys, this is a very important show for you to know because these type of tactics are happening to us every day. The censorship that you're being exposed to, what you hear, what you see, what you feel may not be your own thoughts, but projected thoughts upon you. And any of you guys out there watching me and know about me for a long time, know that I don't bring you a show unless I feel something very important needs to be said today. So guys, let's welcome today MK Ultra Program Survivor, Kathy O'Brien. Hello guys, here is Dr. Patrick Price. And today I have a very special guest, someone I've been looking to meet for many years and uh, not just meeting, but now we have her on our podcast today. This is Ms. Kathy O'Brien and boy, does she have a story to tell you. Those of you out there watching this show, especially many of you who know me, many of my patients worldwide and, and uh, different customers we've had, you need to hear this story because this relates to everybody on planet earth. And, uh, and Kathy being a survivor as she, is, as she has, it shows how strong she is, not just as a person, but as a woman today, still standing strong. So today, guys, let's have a warm welcome for Kathy O'Brien. Kathy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity to reach those who, who follow you to um, have this information on mind control because we're all experiencing it these days. And my insight on it is significant. Knowledge is our defense against mind control. And that knowledge has been suppressed from society, from education, from medical health, just all the way around. And it's time this truth is brought to light because people need to know what in the world is going on these days. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, uh, I definitely, from the from being in the natural medicine business like I am, uh, we've been suppressed for years. We're used to it. And so, but now uh, suppression is happening on all levels. But, uh, but your story along where you are, uh, and people need to know where you came from, Kathy. So give us a good intro for us. Yeah, um, I'm a survivor of CIA MK Ultra Mind Control, and I was born into a multi generational incest based family in 1957 in Muskegon, Michigan. At that time, the CIA was already heavily involved in MK Ultra Mind Control. The information had come over on Project Paperclip through the Nazi and fascist scientists. We didn't win World War II, we brought it over here. And right. with them came the information on mind control that Hitler was using on, um, on the, the people back then. I think we're all a, aware to a degree of the level of mind control those people were under and the, the horrors that they experienced, the trauma mm. that they endured because trauma is the basis of mind control. And mm. it was found through the Hitler Himmler research that the most horrific trauma is pedophilia is sexual abuse of a child, especially prior to age five while their brain is still forming. Mm. What, what happens is our brain has an automatic response system where my abuse, I was so young when my father was sexually abusing me. I couldn't think to know what he was doing was wrong, but mm. my brain knew it was wrong. And it compartmentalized that trauma, actually shut down physically shut down neuron pathways around that trauma. So that's like what repressed memory is. It just kind of pushed it in a dark hole. So the rest of my mind could function normally. This mm -hmm. is an amazing capacity that we have within our brains, but this information, like so much other pertinent information on our mind brain function and our immune systems and the amazing resiliency of our minds, bodies, and spirits has been suppressed in order to use it in MK Ultra mind control mm -hmm. because I knew any child who was sexually abused like I was in a multi-generational setting 
that I would be suffering from a dissociative identity disorder. That's where the neuron pathways in the brain aren't firing right. And it creates a heightened suggestibility because it's the conscious thought that kind of takes flight and leaves the subconscious wide open to be an easily led. Mm. So since I was multi-generational, it was also found in the hitler Himmler research that after three generations, any belief, any, um, a, any like brain response like that becomes autogenic. So then after three generations, even if a child isn't being abused anymore, they're still born with a heightened suggestibility. Mm. So I was a prime candidate I was a target for MK Ultra mind control. My father was um, sex, not only sexually abusing me, he was um, trafficking me to his friends at my grandfather's Blue Masonic Lodge. The Blue Masonic Lodge is comprised of um, politicians and people of influence in the community. And my father was also using me in child pornography. He was caught sending the child pornography through the U.S. mails and told he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would sell me into MK Ultra Mind Control. Mm -hmm. So we're already seeing our justice system was being corrupted. This is back in the early 60s to wow. the point where pedophilia was being sanctioned. And it's because pedophilia is a mind control agenda. And my father received immunity from prosecution from a local politician. And that politician was Gerald Ford. He went on to become the unelected president of the United States. So as his political career escalated, so too did my victimization in MK Ultra mind control. What Hitler, Himmler research had found was um, just the beginning of what the CIA was pulling together the effects of trauma on the human mind to make a very powerful form of mind control. They weren't just seeking to control individuals like myself and using government operations, criminal covert operations in later years, but they were wanting the information so that they could control a population. They wanted to effectively control it more than it happened in Nazi Germany. And the purpose was for this new world order agenda, the same way mm. Adolf Hitler called it the new world order, George Bush Sr. called it the new world order, Joe Biden called it the new world order. Mm. It's um, a slave society agenda where a handful of big guys make all the money, we do all the work. It's a means of controlling humanity. And mm. what I experienced was very significant and put me right deep in the swamp where I was among them and heard what their plan was for us all in this new world order agenda. So I gained quite a lot of insight in my experience. Yeah, well, you know, guys, if you, if you, you have never heard of this before, I don't know about this. Uh, I'm gonna show you later some books that you can get of Kathy's and read and get caught up because I first heard about this in the early nineties. I was in school is becoming a doctor. And I read uh, David Icke's book, The Biggest Secret, and that's when I first heard about Kathy. I was like, how could this really be true, you know? And that I means, is this really what's going on? Do they really do this to people? And then I started finding out there's plenty of books and plenty of information that's been out there for a long time. And, and then, of course, then as a doctor, I started having patients that had no memory of abuse. And that's when the compartmentalism, as far as having yeah. your brain uh, suppress that information, I said, how can it be? that something can happen so horrific to a person and they have no memory of it. And this is exactly what Kathy talks about over and over, right, Kathy? How can, a, how can you describe when someone has something so horrific, say a father, a mother abuses them and they have no memory of that? Can you help everybody understand that a little bit more? Yes, it's because we've been given this mind sane defense to trauma too horrible to comprehend. There's no place for it in the mind. And mm -hmm. so the the brain actually shuts down those neuron pathways and represses that memory. So it becomes a psychiatric issue, not just a psychological um, ignoring the problem or not wanting to deal with it. It's not a choice at all. It's something that our brain does. We need to understand that mind-brain function because when we're being traumatized, um, 
life is very traumatic. It throws traumas at us all the time. We need mm -hmm. to safeguard our free thought at a time like that, because that's when we become highly suggestible. And mm -hmm. so when we have traumas imposed on us in society, like school shootings and um, mm -hmm. the mass shootings and, and, and all that are going on, then we're more easily manipulated and easily led. So it's become a very, very a deliberate, systematic, scientific approach of taking advantage of this mind-brain function that we experience. It doesn't need to be that way. We just need to understand it because once we understand it, we can evolve with the knowledge of mind control. We can safeguard our subconscious mind at a time like that. And sure. we can all heal just like I did. After yeah, so, 30 years of robotic control, I still heal. You're still here. So what would you tell somebody if someone was looking at you going, I'm not under mind control. What would you say to somebody who doesn't believe that they're personally been involved under some type of mind control in their life? What would you tell that person? I, I would say that yeah. mind control is a sliding scale. From the kind of robotic MK Ultra mind control I experienced to information control. Because we all formulate our thoughts and our opinions and our actions based on what we know. And we need to know our knowledge base has been deliberately altered. Mm -hmm. So we all need to be able to start exercising our brains beyond what we think we know because we're smarter mm -hmm. than we think, you know, and we can expand our thinking. Um, in so many ways, because we have just such a, uh, an amazing opportunity within us all. Mm -hmm. Our brains are phenomenal, but that mm -hmm. information has been suppressed. Mm -hmm. Like I said, deliberately suppressed for reasons of national security, from mm -hmm. society, from education, from mental health. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's absurd. Mm -hmm. this, is our, yeah. this is our brain. You know, we have a right to this information to understand yeah. It's function because it really is phenomenal. Now, when you talk about uh, you talk about your movie, guys, she has a movie out. Uh, uh, trance is called. Is it a uh, trance.com? I'm gonna yes. put it up later on. They can see. And uh, and one thing I was involved in California with a friend of mine. A lot of you know about Robert Avilas years ago. We use uh, frequencies of sound to help in healing. Well, we we found some very magical things to sound. And and Kathy talks about in the movie how. We all know that certain frequencies can make us happy and excited and other frequencies are slightly off in the hertz of it can make you feel chaotic, out of balance, upset, even angry. We, Kathy, like, we'd like to touch on that for a second, how even through our computers, our cell phones, frequencies can be emitting through any electronic device that can affect us. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. It's used very deliberately in MK Ultra Mind Control. But it is also something that we need to be aware of because when we choose music, that is an obvious form of harmonics. It's vibrating the neuron pathways of our brain. And so we need to choose what lyrics are being pumped into our head. Right. I think a good example that people can relate to on this is that um, when people hear a song they fell in love with, to or something and they mm -hmm. it will take them back to that moment it's like oh that's when like when we fell in love mm -hmm. um, that's because those neuron pathways are vibrating that area that is is just so photographically remembering that moment that you can actually feel it again for the moment just from that vibrational frequency so we need to choose what we're putting into our head whether it's in the form of music or if it's on computers uh, television, definitely. Mm -hmm. They're called TV programs for a reason. Mm -hmm. programs. And when they mm -hmm. use the harmonics to bring it into our brain, in addition to neuro-linguistic programming, the visual flashing of lights, um, those are mm -hmm. all ways that it's putting in into our subconscious, especially if we're watching television news or something and being bombarded with repetitive trauma something that's going on they show us over and over again like 911 you know mm -hmm. everybody gets a certain image in their mind when mm -hmm. we say that you know because it's the way our brains record that and you add to that the vibrational frequency and the man subconscious manipulation with NLP and you've mm -hmm. got a form of mind control happening right there that knowledge is our defense against it we just need yeah. to be aware that that's happening now, you mentioned NLP. Is this a system that's been used against us for, for a long time? 
Um, yes, neuro linguistic programming. It's mm -hmm. um, it's it's not that it's. it's Can I see good ways that's been used by others? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It can be. It can be used to um, help alleviate a traumatic situation, even like in a hospital setting. You know, they, there's different. Um, it's it's not that NLP itself is bad. It's how it's used and how who it's is used. using it. it right. should, yeah, it should be like taught in schools so that we all are armed with that knowledge instead mm -hmm. of it being suppressed information so that it can be used against us. You know, we need to level that playing field and just get the truth out there so that um, we can make conscious and wise choices for ourselves and what goes into our brains. Now, as far as, uh, you, you know, you mentioned education, and I know I've read about what you've said about others and education system, especially power, people who are in powers to be can, uh, can affect our whole education system across the board in the United States. How would parents, if you were talking to all the parents right now, what would you? What things would you tell your parents to be very careful of with the kids are hearing at school to know that they're in some kind of mind control that's being placed upon their children? Federal government has no business meddling in the minds of our children. We need to go back to paying attention on local levels to the education system and realize that the teachers' associations and that the um, Department of Education in Washington D.C. all those are like just a very top, you don't need a whole lot of people involved. You just need the orders coming down from the top, put a mm -hmm. few key people into place, and then the whole education system is manipulated. So I think a lot of people woke up during um, COVID, which mm -hmm. mind control masked yeah. as a virus, everybody's sheltered at home, and they heard what their kids were saying they were being taught in school. Now we're seeing how we're even seeing the pedophile agenda, which is a mind control right. agenda, being promoted through the school system. So we need to start paying attention and realize that our children are being manipulated in the school system through the harmonics, through the um, um, computerization. We need to go back to books. We need mm -hmm. to go back to writing by hand. Because the very writing. act of moving a pen, yes, like the, the very act yes. of moving a pen is the logic part of the brain. So we're, we process information differently that way. We mm -hmm. need to get that back into education. When people get interactive in the school system again on a local level, get the federal government out of it, get the teachers unions out of it, get truth back in education. Look at the history books. That, that, but history has been rewritten in education in order to alter the knowledge base on which the children formulate their thoughts, opinions, and their actions. And it's to promote the new world order agenda. They're not taught constitutional values. They're not taught anything. They're not taught how to think anymore. They're only taught what to think. And right. as quickly as that happens, right. any level of mind control, whether it's information control or robotic, the first thing that goes is compassion and an ability to care for other people because then people become so inner focused they they don't look outside themselves anymore and we're seeing um um how how much compassion and human interaction is eroding from society because of what's going on in our education system you do, you do so I, yeah i have a lot of i yeah. have a lot of passion for what's going on in education and it's just people need to be aware so that we can um, reclaim the integrity well, i know here in texas uh texas a lot of uh patients i know actually a lot of my doctor's friends have all gone to homeschooling type systems all these little micro schools have set up they call them now or set up and educating their, their kids on their own. They said because even at kindergarten, first grade, there's, there's a lot of information that's being presented to children at a very young age that's very confusing, especially talking to, yes. to a kindergarten child about sexuality. What, what I mean, I think about when I'm five years old, sexuality was no clue. I, I, I'm worried about getting in the mud and getting mud on me and everywhere on my body. Uh, sexuality was not a thought at five or six years old. Would, won't you, wouldn't you agree with that? Um, yes, for most, it sh that's the way it should be. 
for me, it was uh, just a very pervasive part of my life. And that's because I was born into that pedophile agenda, which yeah. is the ultimate mind control agenda. Yeah. If three generations could be manipulated, whether it's in the school system, indoctrination like they're doing, um, the, then it becomes autogenic. And the, ultimately, what is wanted is by this handful of criminals, this dark energy force that is wanting to um, manipulate the minds of us all and create this slave society agenda. Pedophilia mm -hmm. is their number one means of doing it. And our children are being bombarded with it in the school system so horrifically and blatantly now. But mm -hmm. that's because they're thinking, well, three generations have been affected now. They, this should be right. easily accepted. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's a violation of all that we are. Without mm -hmm. free thought, there's no free will. With no free will, there's no soul expression, no strength of the human spirit, no ability to stand up for the things that we believe in. That's mm -hmm. why mind control is being imposed on humanity is because this this small handful of criminals that are hell bent on this new world order agenda are afraid of our strength of spirit. They're afraid of that. They know that's where we win and where they lose. It's our mm -hmm. strength. It's where we say, right. no, you're not going to do that to our children. So they're, they're, they're trying to um, really get us to just totally comply with their mind control agenda. And the pedophile mm -hmm. agenda is key to that. So we really need to start protecting our children, arm ourselves with this knowledge. I agree. And so, so I have another question for you, Kathy. Now, maybe in a doctor and, and uh, other doctors that be watching this video as well. And like uh, we've talked about this before, where we now have to have a um, uh, sex trafficking course we take here in Texas about whether we see it and can identify it in, in our office. But there's nothing really shown what to do about it except called authorities which I think is not very helpful. If you were talking to doctors, how would you help doctors identify and what, what words of wisdom could you give doctors how to deal with someone when you, when you see someone who's been involved in sex, tra sex trafficking? Because I've had several come across my path over the years as well, like we discussed. So what would you, what would you tell the doctors to help them identify and be able to do something with? The, the main thing that could be done is the methods that I used for healing are very easy to self-apply. They're available for everyone in PTSD Time to Heal, which is those methods. And it's as simple as writing out memory. Um, and that it, was very it simple. works with so, many, so mm -hmm. many different therapies. So if a, um, a chiropractor or a massage therapist or or whomever suddenly triggers memory in a mm -hmm. particular area where they've they've touched someone and the person starts talking about their memory mm -hmm. and um, talks about it in detail, like they just go on and on and on. Right. Like they need to be writing that out because a neuron pathway in the brain has been triggered open and the information that was previously compartmentalized is leaking out. So if someone just goes into a memory recall from a situation like that, <clears throat> then it would be good to advise them to um, write it out, make a note right there on the spot, because otherwise it'll just recompartmentalize and they won't remember. But make a right. note of it and then right. write it out in later. Well, I had so a uh, that that, would help. that that is exactly especially your book. I gave this book. I gave your book to to a lady there uh, recently last year. Well, actually. Uh, I've, I've had several, but you know, when you're, when you're working on people, like you said, massage therapists, chiropractors, when we touch people, certain yeah. memories awaken, right? And usually I find when it's been one of the female patients, it's been someone who has trouble with relationships. They, they can't find, they go from relationship to relationship because of, uh, of something yeah. has happened, all these triggers, right? And so one time, one is like Pandora's box open and told me a whole story similar to yours, which was pretty spooky because it was very explicitly detailed. And I don't want to give names because it's names that people all know. And so I had them do, just as you instructed, began to writing their story out. And this was, this was extremely helpful because I, I think what you're saying is when people begin to write out that connection between the neurons, the hand, there is an emotional release, but it gives you a touch of what reality is again. Because they have a trouble distorting what is real and what's not, correct? 
Yes, and moving, moving the pen uses that logic part of the brain where critical analysis is, and it shifts it and makes it completely different. Within that compartmentalized memory as a photo, photographic memory, because mm -hmm. that's the, the way our brains just record that. It's like um, people who've been in an accident can even remember license plates, you know, or, or whatever right. that... Mm -hmm. You know, they can see those details because the trauma compartmentalizes photographic memory. And so it can be written out in absolute um, photographic detail. But so if someone's talking and they start talking in this photographic detail, it's because they're dumping this compartment. Verbalizing it can actually re-traumatize. It's very important that they pick up the pen and start mm -hmm. writing it out. It's, it's key to healing. What happens by doing it and shifting it that way is it will keep those neuron pathways open so that they don't just close back down again. And, um, when those neuron pathways close down, we lose more and more of our own um, free thought, critical analysis. Um, and so we want to we want to open those neuron pathways and be able to think free. So it's important for them to be able to leave it open. And by writing, they 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 suddenly can heal um, psychiatrically and psychologically and you know really on all levels at once. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's so what really about helpful a, too. For example, what about like yeah. a, uh, would you recommend this also, like say someone is just a, a child went through, his mother and father went to an ugly divorce and you got like a young adult. Would you also recommend the same type of thing as the writing things out for them as well to overcome what they experienced with their parents? Yes, absolutely. I write, I still write now, I write um, poetry. It's not conventional at all. It's mm -hmm. venting poetry always with a solution. Um, but by writing that, um, it helps me cope with some of the horrors that are going on in our world today because right. it is horrific. And it's a really good way for everyone to even just cope with what's going on and think beyond what controlled media is bombarding us with, to think mm -hmm. beyond the traumas that we're seeing around us. Um, it helps to write that out. And I say with a solution because Mark taught me my hero, excuse me, to voice no negatives out a solution. And by that rule, which is really, really good rule for all of us to apply. What if we applied that to social media even, you know, and they couldn't voice a negative without a solution. It, hey, it changed hey, Kathy. the whole dynamic. Well, Kathy, explain uh, about Mark Phillips, his story here. A lot of, because not everybody knows your story. And Mark, how, uh, how he was your hero here. You want to touch on that for a moment? Oh, I, I actually, actually, he's a very brave man for what he did, right? Yes, yes, and a, a great example to to us all, and how we can make a difference when we see what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Mark was working on the highest levels of intelligence and in mind study and mind sciences, and Mark was a spook, and he wore many different many different hats and many different agencies. So he was. <laughs> There? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So he, he was able to be in key places at key times. And one of those pictures there shows him with a White House invitation. He was certainly in and out of the White House. Yeah. And it was be because of where he was, he saw human trafficking going on. Yeah. He saw the pedophile agenda happening mm -hmm. and the, the human trafficking operations going on. He saw how certain politicians and judges were being compromised through blackmail on um, having been uh, filmed while children are, yeah. you know. That's pretty much that's pretty much how it happens a lot. It seems like Kathy, because I had a, yes, it is. Me being from, yes, a, it is. A, a, I'll tell you a brief story. Me and my father, just a simple man in Louisiana, he had a very good friend who got involved in politics back in Louisiana. And a great guy got into it for the right reasons and helping a lot of people. And uh, they got him in a compromising position and they blackmailed him to make him vote and do things how they wanted. So I've seen that firsthand happen to good people. Yes. And I was used in that capacity. My daughter and I both were um, used to compromise certain government leaders and drug lords because um, the 
funding mechanism of the new world order is drug and human trafficking. So um, those were things that I was definitely exposed to. And Mark saw that going on on the highest levels of government. He also saw from while he was studying mind sciences that pertinent information on healing from trauma was suppressed from society, that that information was being used to manipulate minds rather than um, than keep them free. And so he was he was outraged at what he saw going on. He was outraged seeing children being brought in and out of the White House. He was outraged to see our country being sold out to the new world order and our constitutional yeah. values of freedom and justice for all being yeah. totally eroded. So he yeah. decided to take action. And this was back in 1988 before people even knew what human wow. trafficking was. 88. Before they even knew what mind control was. No one had any idea and at that time, did they? Not back then, no. not back then, except the people who were um, perpetuating it. And really, you're the pioneer. Would, Kathy, would you say you're really the pioneer kind of, not a, not a pioneer uh, position you really want to have, but you're kind of the person who really brought this to the world, right? I, I see it as. Well, I saw so much on a White House Pentagon level myself. I mean, what I witnessed and experienced uh, is... In my testimony for Congress that was released in 1995, Transformation of America, and it outlines exactly what we're experiencing today. So it's absolutely amazing that Mark Phillips reached into that Here's Washington, D.C. Can you see your book here, Kathy, Transformation of America? Can you see that? Um, I don't see it up there yet. Uh, yes. There yes. That's your first yes. book, correct? It was Yes, it was actually written for Congress because um, national security was invoked on my testimony. And Mark and I wanted to get that information to every member of Congress. So we put it in book form and released it that way. And it was delivered to every member of Congress by very concerned members. Mm -hmm. um, there's good and bad and everything. And there's certainly a lot of good people that were active in intelligence and um, in Congress at the time that were wanting to expose this new world order agenda. Yeah. Mark wasn't alone in that act, but he was the first to actually take action and mm -hmm. rescued my daughter and me. I was um, turning 30. There's electrochemical changes that happen in our brain around age 30, which is why oftentimes people with repressed memory start remembering, you know, they mm -hmm. get memory flashes of, of right. abuse around that. And um, because mm -hmm. of that natural brain phenomena, I was to be killed at age 30 for what I had witnessed and experienced on um, the New World Order agenda. And Mark intercepted and just rescued, <laughs> rescued me right out and handed me keys to my own mind. That Mark did not deprogram. He right. that taught was, that, me how to. That, that, he, risked, he really risked his job, his career, his life, everything yes. to rescue, right? Oh, yes. Yes. And, and he said, well, who, who's shooting at us, literally? You know, and, um, and I, so I was remembering as fast as I could in order to um, keep us safe. And because of my daughter's dire situation, it's, um, it was love for humanity that compelled me to um to heal it wasn't bitterness or hatred or mm -hmm. um or anything like that it was mm -hmm. the the need to get the so truth with, so with you and your there. so with you going through it and those of you watching this program if you still don't understand or, or even believe that this is going on in the world today all you need to do is start reading her books guys just get her books and start reading her story and understand because this is a story that goes much deep. She's she's just touching the surface for you guys out there of what happened. Some of the most horrific things that you can imagine in your lifetime to ever witness, see, and, and read about has happened to her and those around her. And when a lot of this is still going on today, as you know. So what can you do besides just stick your head in the sand is actually read and, and inform yourself. Watch watch your movie, trance.com, and uh, understand that's still kind of the surface area there. But when you read the books, you're going to get a really deep understanding of what's really happening. And to avoid 
your children, friends of yours, ever getting in these situations. Because if you're a single parent, your, ch your child is still vulnerable at a point to be involved in any kind of these programs. You don't have the, always the power or the energy to take care of your child 100%, but really every parent out there, you need to be like hawks, watching your kids, every watching their phones, watching their emails. I know it's a, kids don't like the intrusions, but if you're a parent today, you don't know who your, your child sometimes you're really talking to. They could be talking to some kind of stalker on, the, on their text messages, on their phone, on social media, because that has been shown over and over again a lot of these uh, pedophile type stalkers are out there after your children, trying to meet with them. So please, uh, her story is like a, a landmark case that comes forth to help everybody identify that this is very real. It could happen to anybody you know, and it, someone could be standing right in front of you that's either involved, they've been involved in that program, and they have no clue. Would you say when, remember when Kate Perry shaved her head and Britney Spears, isn't that all part of the, they're starting to remember things? And that's part of their, their deprogramming in a way. So they start to shave their head. Is that one of the things you look for sometimes when people come back? That's, out? yeah, it, that's um, memory flashes intruding around age 30 while mm -hmm. someone is still being um, totally controlled. And so usually at a time like that, they're sent to um, a major programming reprogramming epicenter, whether it be a military base, NASA installation, DARPA installation, but most often it was Disney World because the Disney underworld. World. It, yeah, the underworld wow. at Disney World. Well, there you go. There's the pedophile agenda again, Disney. You know, I mean, it's, and and, and, and Disney's affiliation with- Well, um, no one believed Project that for years, Pay. right, Kathy? It's like, no one believed that Disney had this underground compound for years. And then now employees have come forth and drawn out the maps and says, yes, there's a whole underground city under Disney. <laughs> yes, you've been, tell, been, you've been telling them for years, right? Yes, I was taken there too. And um, yeah, when, when we understand how pervasive mind control is, we realize that it's been hiding in plain sight. Yes. And knowledge gives us defense against it and gives us the ability to see how human trafficking and child sex trafficking has become the most lucrative business in the world. Follow the money. It is the funding mechanism of the new world order. Drug and human trafficking is. So, um, right. When we realize the pervasiveness of it, then we need to um, start reaching out with compassion and realize what it looks like around us, you know, and instead of snap judging people for having, uh, you know, like a million piercings and, and be, um, you know, kind of look like clowns, it's because depersonalization happens with any level of mind control where a <clears throat> person doesn't even see themselves and then it becomes to the point where they don't feel anymore. They can't even right. consciously I feel so that those are like neon signs of abuse and when mm -hmm. we realize that it gives us a whole different perspective on what's happening with these people they're marching to new world orders as yeah. as planned now kathy i had a now one thing parents can identify with even if you're not a single parent and kathy help help them understand this is like i identified something a child one time was always wearing like these uh wrist protectors and one day in the office, I go, hey, let me see that wrist protector. And I just, whoop, just slipped it down because I knew she was hiding it for a reason. And then I was, uh, this is back in, I guess, the late 90s. I'd never known uh, how children do these things. And a lot of times, just the young teenagers, they start cutting themselves. Now, you've, you've parents may be familiar with this, maybe you're not. But as a doctor, we look for these things. And children will hide it. They'll cut their leg where you can't see it. They'll cut the wrist. And I, I finally got a child one time to talk to me about why are you cutting yourself? And they says, when they cut themselves, it helps to release the pain. And I always go, what pain? And then it's different, but it's some kind of abuse happening. So would you say this is another thing for parents to look out for their children who are cutting themselves, Kathy? Absolutely. It's another sign, neon sign of abuse. And it's because they can't feel and what they're feeling inside is overridden for the moment with that with that physical um, aspect of, of a trauma. So um, absolutely that is another sign of it and one that we all should 
be paying attention to because it's an indicator of something that is much deeper that's within and um, the abuses. So if a parent, if a parent discovers this, just like we're talking about, let's say a parent today watches a show and discovers their child has been cutting themselves. What would you, what would you advise that parent to first do? The, the first thing would probably be to, to talk with the, the child, but have them draw it out or write it out, write use it out. a pen, mm -hmm. because they're not likely to voice it. They may, um, it may be a relative or someone, mm -hmm. and you can't say, is so-and-so doing this to you? But you could say, who is doing this to you? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you assert, um, who it might be, then it can confuse the memory and just cause all kinds of problems. They might be afraid that if they talk, as is so often in that kind of abuse, mm -hmm. uh, that if they talk, that someone they love is going to be hurt, you know, or right. if you tell your mother, we're going to kill, you know, you know, they get these threats and it's so it terrifies them. So they're not telling, they're not speaking it mm -hmm. if they write it or draw right, it. it. Be so that is a lot of times it may yes. be an aunt, an uncle, a relative, the next door neighbor who's abusing them, and they have a hard time talking about it. So writing it would probably be the easiest way you're saying, right? Yes, and and it can take time. So um, allow for, you know, you be patient and and kind and gentle through that, that process instead of demanding an answer now because mm. that, it doesn't work that way. The brain has to... Um, allow for that to surface and to feel safe enough for the compartmentalization to open and and for the information to um, to come out that way. Now, have you seen it's, any uh, kind of other programming as far as when I say programming as programs of uh, counseling, psychology that have been helpful that you're aware of? Any kind of things out there that someone, if they want to step further besides just writing, is there anything else you've seen that they could benefit from? Um, all the methods in PTSD time to heal, um, that, that's how I was able to heal from 30 years of torturous robotic mind control. And I reclaimed it because it's within us all to heal. And if we heal from within ourselves, ourselves, then we're not tipping off an abuser that might be right here. And we're safe wow. in doing that from within ourselves. And if when, when we heal that way, because we have, we have been um, already blessed with this amazing capacity for healing and this amazing wow. resiliency, then when we heal, it's absolute and it's strong and it's forever. And so it's important to do it from within. There are other therapies that this works with. Um, I don't know of any kind of therapy that it wouldn't work with. Wow. Um, so as long as, as those methods are applied as well, then other therapies can can be helpful to get things started. Don't talk about the abuse because that can, you know, just, just further traumatize. It's important that it's written out. And it's also very important to know that mental health, this information was deliberately suppressed for mental health so that um, people couldn't remember the things that they mm. were tortured to forget so that wow. they wouldn't remember what MK Ultra is all about, so that they wouldn't tell on their um, abusers. So this information has been deliberately suppressed for so long that mental health is very ignorant on how to deal with um, the situation. So, because definitely the medications really are not doing it. it. When I see people no. on a lot of the strong psychiatric drugs, it just seems like uh, it's just putting a band aid on a sore that's not healing. <laughs> Yeah, the felony because with the medication, then a person can't allow for the natural process within their brain and for their own ability to be able to heal. And it's like I said, it's within us all to heal, and we don't need medication mm -hmm. to do that. The um, strength of who we are from within to be able to um, have full access to that, so that we can think clear and reclaim our free thought, free will. And, mm -hmm. and, and soul expression. So we absolutely need, don't need any pharmaceuticals. Big Pharma is influencing our lives on so many levels. We don't mm -hmm. need them influencing our 
our farms. We don't we get big pharma out of our farms mm-hmm. and um, get them out of our food supply because nutrition is very important. When a person is beginning to heal, they need good nutrition. They need to be in mm-hmm. a safe place. So if we're going to create um, the ideal place for someone to heal, then they just need to know the methods to heal themselves and be in a safe place where they have access to really good food, super nutrition, Mm -hmm. natural foods that haven't been tainted pharmaceutically, um, where they haven't been tainted with, um, like, um, in in my case, I was fed copious quantities of aspartame, the artificial sweetener. Really? Aspartame? Yes. It stops critical analysis free thought. So it's been deliberately um, pushed on society and in, in, in a big way for the purpose of dumbing us down and creating that more compliant society that they're wanting for the new so world. It's kind of like, like fluoride so, in a way, though. Yes, same thing. Same right. thing. Um, next, next step, another direction that it comes from. And there's so many others, too, that we need to watch for. And instead of having um, an advertisement harmonically tell us what to go buy, you know, in the store, and we just reach for it and and buy that product, we need to start reading labels. We need to grow our own, you know, like, um, um, and, and make sure that it's organic and, um, not use the, the horrific pesticides and stuff, but we need to get that nutrition. We need to have, um, certain foods too, that will, uh, that will feed our brain. And I think a lot of those are being phased out of society. Whether right, right. Um, I think that's where our future is, um, Kathy. We're, you're exactly right. I yes. did an interview with a lady yesterday. She, her book is called The Presence of Soil. And her big thing is about bringing back not just the plants, but the good soil, you know, to put the plants in. Because yes. most of our soil has so many chemicals in it. You're getting that in the plant. So as far as people having their own little organic farm at home, grow the basic things in your at your home that you can grow even on, now they have all these growers you can grow inside your home on your patio if you live in an apartment or condo everybody can grow certain things these days and and that's i'm a big proponent of grow what things you can that are pretty effortless and your and your it doesn't take a lot of time let's say you know and so because the foods i mean i do the i do the urinalysis of patients all the time we got so many herbicides, pesticides that are all brain altering chemicals or all hormone disruptors. I mean, this it's just a broad spectrum. I, I kind of wonder sometimes, Kathy, why we're not glowing at night from all the chemicals in our bodies. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. I'm so mindful of that. So um, Mark was a gourmet chef. He he was on, on wow. top of everything else. He was a gourmet chef. He, he did a little and bit of everything, didn't he? <laughs> He did. He's an amazing man. He was so kind and so good. And yet, you know, so strong in, in having the fortitude to be able to um, rescue my daughter and me and then having um, the, the, the strength, the spirit to teach me what love is. After all, I didn't do it. I didn't know good people even existed in the world. And yet um, he, he taught me that love is the most powerful force in the universe. He showed me love. He gave me love. He's a, 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 an amazing, um, just an amazing man in so many ways. And yeah, and he cooked really, really well. And he cooked. And, if, and the man can cook. That's the man to keep. <laughs> and made sure that it was very nutritionally sound because I and yes I own, and I yes I do cook for my wife too Kathy I cook I cook I'm not the gourmet chef but I know uh, some foods to cook for my wife and I, I cook a good meal too <laughs> that's wonderful it's it's so good when we when we just um you know all this divisiveness has been going on in this so-called toxic masculinity and all that when we're just who we are true to soul we're so well-rounded and we have the ability to to do and be anything we want, you know, and there's so much freedom Mm -hmm. when we live true to soul and we're not being um, bombarded from the outside with uh, so much. Being told, um, being told what the, I think the biggest thing, Kathy, is we're all being told. We think we have a belief that we understand it is our belief for ourselves. But I think many of us are not realizing from cradle to grave, some advertisements have been on children from cradle to grave. And so we've been told what to believe. Just because someone has a belief that we think we have is not necessarily true. And that's part of what I do, I think, every day with patients is getting them to 
to look at what their beliefs are and challenge those beliefs because just because that's what you think is is white or black that's not necessarily true uh, and especially if you have a you know when you get down to religion oh my god you if we have religious beliefs that are this way try to alter that in a person if it's not working for them i'm not against any any religion or faith guys we all we all believe in the creator but the idea is if you have a belief that's causing harm to your body your mind your family to yourself in any level you need to challenge that belief and, and think that maybe you're just maybe it's wrong <laughs> maybe you have a wrong belief here yeah, yeah that, when my daughter was like like 10 or 11 and the psychiatrists were telling her no what you think happened didn't happen to you and she said your beliefs don't change reality <laughs> and i thought that was just the Strong most little girl. statement how is she <laughs> today your, your, how, is your, how is your daughter these days kathy um she is free of the system and just happy to see people finally waking up to the reality mm -hmm. that mind control exists in our world and I think mind control masked as a virus had a profound effect mm -hmm. um, on a lot of people. They, they're starting to wonder what in the world is going on. And they, they call it mass formation, psychosis, brainwashing. But people mm -hmm. realized that they were complying with a repetitive program over and over and over again to mask up, you know, and social distance and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> and they realized hey something's wrong here so she was she's just watching people wake up and wish it would happen a little bit faster good, but good. Um, I, I have a question um, for you i want to change the subject for just a second i'm glad to hear that kathy i know she's been through a lot like you guys if you know what her daughter went through as well it's a uh, it, just for them to be happy and alive is is a, a god-given gift to them that they survived all this but now, I want to add for this, for people watching the show, Kathy, is, is there any moot, because I've been asked before, is any kind of movies or documentaries they could also watch what happened in the past? Because I had someone tell me a long time ago to watch this old 70s movie. It's an old Charles Bronson movie. And it was kind of funny because old goofy movie from the 70s, but it showed the Russians had put sleeper cells in, uh, in the United States. And so they give them a code, some kind of code word through the phone, and they go drive their truck into a, you know, to some kind of company and blow it up. But the sleeper cells have been so long over here that they kind of forgotten who they really were in a way. But they were still activating some of those sleeper cells, even though they've been way past their time. So the Russians, uh, they said, possibly had it first. Any truth to that? And of course, in about movies. Well, there's definitely truth to um, that kind of triggering, and um, I, I'm I'm so glad that, that that some information has come out through the years. You know, even the term Manchurian candidate, you know, yeah, is that a good description it. of yeah, yeah of, of politicians that are are manipulated in in DC. So yeah, there there are definitely good movies. I think it's interesting too to look at. Um, some of the old shows from back in the 60s and 70s, and you can see the social engineering coming on and, and how people are being manipulated into how we've arrived at this point today and um, our perceptions of self, you know, kind of going, going back on, on that a little bit too, because um, how we perceive ourselves perceive ourselves as male, female, or, or, or whatever, through social engineering, what we've been bombarded with. Mm -hmm. It's like when I healed from 30 years of MK Ultra mind control, then um, I had to find out who I am inside. You know, it's like right. um, I had to learn to think for myself and think in terms of solutions to cause my brain to fire in new ways. And, and so now I was questioning, who am I? And I couldn't find out who I am from outside input. I had enough outside input in my life. I needed to find out who I was from within myself. And I found myself at the base core energy of my being. And that is, is love. People also told me, well, you have to love yourself. And daily affirmations, you know, and whatever society mm -hmm. would tell me to do to love myself wasn't working, you know. Um, after all I'd been through, what I'd witnessed and seen, what I'd been forced to participate in, you know, how how is that going to happen? Well, 
when I found out who I am at the base core energy of my being, I found that to be love. So I decided then I'm going to just live the love that I am true to soul, who I am, true to soul. And that was a lot easier than trying to love myself. I just live the love, you know? So when we get to that identity of who we are inside ourselves, free of outside influence, free of ego, which I think is other people's perceptions of, of who we are, free of all of that, who we really are inside, then we find why we're here at this pivotal moment in time, why we're here living this life right now, you know, and we find our life's purpose. And once we anchor to that and know our own truth, then it's easy to discern truth around us. It's easy to see what we've been bombarded with through the media, how we've been socially engineered, and we can start getting all that clutter and garbage, that divisiveness, that shallow nonsense out of our lives so that we can go back to who we are and who we're meant to be and why we're really here. It's kind of like going back to the, to the good soil and, and having nutritious food again, you know, and, and start nourishing our, our brains and our bodies because we've got, we've got a ways to go to get back to the core reason why we're really here. And once we know that, we have all the strength in the world to start stop complying with this new world order agenda and just say no to that. And we're in light of the love that we are and the purpose we're here for. Excellent, excellent. Good, good message, Kathy. All right, Kathy Solik, I wanna to get to the end of the show for all you watching uh, and, uh, and guys, please, Contact when you guys see the videos come out, please contact, put any information and questions you may have. We'll answer them the best you can. And, uh, and like I said, I'll, at the end here, I'll have all uh, Kathy's information. You guys will see her books, her video out. Uh, look at this as, if anything, look at this as educational for you. This is a part of uh, your life maybe you've not been exposed to. You don't have to go so deep into it as some of us do, like I have. And uh, the idea is, is information is, is knowledge, guys, and knowledge is power for you. And if you don't have this knowledge and information, you need to at least wake up a little bit to it because it's definitely already a part of your life, whether you know it or not. And so, Kathy, any last words of wisdom for everyone out there watching the show today? Truth really does make us free. Thank you for helping bring that truth to light and opening the eyes, ears, and minds of so many. Appreciate you. Thank you. Good. Well, you're welcome. I believe in your message, Kathy. And, and since since day one, since reading the first thing about you, I knew this was a message eventually I'd be helping to take out to the world. So I'm I'm very proud, very happy uh, to be part of that with you. And a uh, and big hug to you, Kathy. Okay. Thank All right, you. guys. Thank you for watching. This is Dr. Patrick Price, and this is the Body Tech the Show. I'll see you next time around. Take care, everyone.